You're listening to Boobies and Newbies, brought to you by the Frolic Podcast Network. podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today's episode is all about redemption. More on that in a second. But first things first, let's talk business. You can always catch up on past episodes of Boobies and Newbies on our website or on your favorite podcast app. If you're a fan of the show and you've got a few minutes to spare, the best way you could help us out would be to leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, if you would like to show the podcast a little extra love and support, might I recommend you join us on Patreon. We've got monthly patron-only events, early sneak peeks, bonus clips, and so much more, and you gain instant access to it all for as little as $1 per month. You will find links to all of the above in today's show notes. And now, please join me in welcoming today's guest, Craig Elliott. Craig is a published author, educator, and a self-proclaimed budding romance reading enthusiast. He is also a returning guest to Boobies and Newbies. Welcome, Craig. Yay! Yay! I imagine there's a there's an applause track there. Yeah, insert applause. I mean, you would think after like six seasons, I would be like putting in applause tracks every time somebody came in, but no, not so much. Maybe this one time around, I'll I'll work on it. Well, uh, or I'll just create my own applause track in my own head. <laughs> That'll be just fine. Yeah, you'll be your own hype person. Yes. So we all need that. It's important. That's it is good. important. Like, um, I, 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 I think I would make a great hype woman in general. I think you would make a great hype man as well. So, um, we'll also offer out our services to people. Like, if you need hyping up, we are. That's what I'm saying. Right. Available. We are your people. Okay. <laughs> That'll be our fourth and fifth side jobs that we'll add yes. to our. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, great to be back. <laughs> Well, I am excited to have you back because, as I mentioned, this episode is all about redemption because the last time you were here, it... Oh, goodness. I, I mean, we had fun. We had fun. But yes. if anybody listened to... I think this would have been this past season of the 12 Days of Boobs Miss. 12 Days of Boobs Miss 2021, if you will. And we did not have a great book pick. Like, I, I don't know about you, but the only thing I've retained from that book is the children being like the most annoying children ever written in a book. (laughs) Like it was like, it was like a bad stage play of like a Christmas Carol. Like it was just like, but please what's the meaning of Christmas? It was cheese ball. Cheese ball. And like, I remember, I mean, especially reading this book, like I just remember like how, non-sexy it was yeah so like yeah it was all off-screen sex and and just cheese yeah so it was so i'm i'm grateful to be back with another opportunity and another experience (laughs) i told you i mean i know it took almost a year to get there but i told you we would we would correct this error that i made totally selecting that holiday you know what they can't all be winners and i will say you know that's it People ask me all the time how I select the books for the podcast. And I know a lot of people will pre-read books for their podcast. I don't do that. I select 90% of our books as ones that I haven't read either. And so that's why so many of our conversations are very nuanced in that there are things we both like about it, but maybe things that um, might have prevented me from reading it in the first place had I known about those things because not every yes. book is for every person. <laughs> Correct. But I, I, I will say, I kind of like that, that it's, that it's this shared experience that we're both having, mm-hmm. um, that it's, that we're, we're discovering this together and, and, and then we get to talk about it as, as we've learned about it. So it works for me. So yeah, I look, I look forward to, I already look forward to, to session three. <laughs> joining boobies and newbies already putting that out there in the universe okay well i mean you are the self-proclaimed budding romance reading enthusiast so i mean i have to ask like right. have you read any romance between then and now no okay 
That's okay. I appreciate I mean, your really, honesty. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, it's really you. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, that uh, that it's it's your influence in my life that I'm like, oh, Kelly's doing this thing. Okay. So, so, but I will say, I'm going to be reading your new book that's coming out. <laughs> so that'll be my between for the next one. So. I like it. I yep. like it. That's perfect. Um, yes, please do read my book. In fact, I should have inserted that into my announcements at the top of the show, uh, kind of twofold in that this is October or Cocktober, as I call it fondly. Okay. Yep. And um, what is coming up for Boobies and Newbies is a few exciting things because at the end of this month, October 28th, I will be doing a live show in Los Angeles with our good friends. My Worst Date podcast. They have graciously invited me to open their show for them. And I decided that it would be weird for me to stand up on stage alone and do a TED talk about romance. So I invited my good friend, Becky Feldman, who hosts Too Stupid to Live podcast, to join me. So you are getting three podcasts for the price of one, um, one night wow. only <laughs> in Los Angeles. And before anybody thinks, oh my gosh, I don't live anywhere near LA, you know, there's no way I can listen to this or watch this. The good news is, is that they are offering tickets for streaming as well. So if, fabulous! if you want to stream the show and watch it, you can do that. I think they even give you like a 72 hour window to watch it, which is great. So I've got all the information about that up on my website. I've got the link for tickets in the bio on all of my social medias. So that is numero uno. And uh, the second thing is that I do have a book that I have written that is coming out this month on October 25th. Um, Kind of perfect timing too, because I'm hoping to bring paperback copies to sign to the live show on the 28th. Like if, if timing works out, if, if, if timing permitting and like, you know, assuming Amazon's not having like paper shortages again, but um, there's only so much I can control. And uh, so that's happening on the 25th, the release of Meet Me in Los Feliz. And um, that is a holiday romance novella. So if you're like me and you kind of start your holiday romance reading in October, it's a weird mishmash of like monsters and like, urban fantasy and then segueing into holiday romance and Hallmark movies. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, That's good. There you go. A couple exciting things happening this month. So I look forward to all of that, uh, the streaming and the book. Um, I will just, you, cause you mentioned holidays. It reminded, we probably should do a like bonus episode for one of these seasons about when the right time for holidays to start are. Ooh. And so that's a whole philosophical conversation. There. <laughs> it's and I know there's of, people on all sides. Yeah. It's kind of up there with the conversation about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Exactly. Right. So that's, so th- those are some bonus episodes I think you should put on the queue that I certainly want to be a part of. <laughs> Okay. Both of those bonus episodes. Okay. With whatever palette of guests that you want to bring together. For that. Maybe maybe we'll make that um, a Patreon perk. We'll save it for the patrons and have that conversation. Love it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Good. So when you're a subscriber to a certain level, you get access to this bonus yeah. content. There you go. One yeah, more reason okay. to join the Patreon. See, what did I say? Craig is a great hype person. Here he is hyping up my book, <laughs> my Patreon. <laughs> And I think um, yes, I, am. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you also are a writer as well. And you've published within um, a, a great set of stories about uh, parenting. Yes. Yeah. So uh, part of a group uh, called Rad Dads, uh, Feminist Fathers, and uh, really exploring what does it mean to be a trying to, you know, uh, be a feminist parent, but also like, how do we, how do we raise our kids in us with a social justice model of parenting? Yes. Um, so that we are, that, you know, the, the, polit- the personal is political, political is personal. Um, that idea is that, that every bit, every, everything in our life is an opportunity for us to uh, work for justice and peace and love. And so, um, so it's a fantastic group to be a part of. And yeah, we, there's a couple of anthologies out there where we wrote, um, different takes on uh, feminist parenting. And, and what I, one of the things I really love about it, it's, it's uh, multivocal. Um, and so um, 
there's so many different angles and perspectives uh, and so many different conceptions of fatherhood and, and motherhood and parenting um, and how that ha- ha- navigating the world around mm. us that is, uh, you know, that is really gender normative in, in really two ways. And, and, yeah. and how do we do that? And, uh, and I think the kind of the related, which ties into this, like how, how are, how could we move to develop raise, be so, you know, sex positive, raise sex positive kids, um, certainly uh, to be healthy and responsible and mm-hmm. loving, mm-hmm. Um, but not in this um, sex is a, is a repressive thing. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. So rad dad, uh, there's, I think two anthologies and if you're, if you want to go old school and you can find them, there's, there's old school paper zines uh, you know, I think there's, uh, oh my yeah, so <laughs> I think we did like 30 or 40, um, you know, in the zine fest in San Francisco, like we were there, like, yeah, it was, there were some good times. So that's amazing. Um, I, anyway, think yeah. I knew that it had started as a series of zines. So that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, totally. Uh, Tomas, uh, one of the, the founders of, uh, Red Dead, like, yeah, he's this whole self publishing. He did the zine thing and, um, he's a great author in his own right. And uh, yeah, so it's neat to just be a part of that whole zine thing. That's so cool. Well, and I think, you know, everything that you're touching on that's covered in these stories, I think it's something that's very similar to a lot of things that I like to talk about on this podcast. So if people enjoy, I mean, there's not an episode that goes by without me bringing up the patriarchy in some way. So it's it's right. just, all yep. that to say yeah. that if you are a fan of this podcast, I think there's a lot of things that you would love about about these stories. So I highly recommend. And I'll, of course, link uh, put a link in the show notes today for anybody that awesome. wants to grab a copy. Maybe not to the zine, but to the paperback um, or Kindle right. copy. Exactly, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. That's probably an easier endeavor these days. But, you know, if you really are committed to it. Yeah, yeah you can find out. them. Yeah. You can find them. Yeah. Well, let's talk about romance and the fact that this one is, I think, a polar opposite from the last one we picked because yes. our holiday romance, besides being extremely boring and tame, was um, a historical cowboy Christmas romance. And now we're talking about urban fantasy paranormal contemporary so all that to say that today's book pick is fire magic and ice cream by lauren Connolly, and i labeled this as an urban fantasy romance um it was published in may 2022 so just a few months ago it's available on amazon for free with kindle unlimited This is also the first book in Lauren Connolly's Casual Magic series, and I know that there hasn't been any news yet about further books in this series, but judging by the content, I would assume future books in the series would be about the the family. It would be about our main character's family and friends um, and this community that they have of elementals, as they call them. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do my best oh my not to forget all the different names and terms and stuff that are brought oh, no, up totally, in this, right. yeah. but yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not making any promises. So um, let's start with the synopsis, which I will share. This comes straight from goodreads.com. And then we will dive okay. into our conversation. Here we go. When fire meets ice cream, will passion turn into a melted mess or desert Flam- no, dessert flambe. I just said desert. <laughs> I mean, they were in the desert. <laughs> they are in the desert. Oh, when, right, yeah. When fire meets ice cream, will passion turn into a melted mess or dessert flambe? I'm also going to pause there just to say that if you are not into like a large amount of puns and jokes about the elements... You will not like the synopsis, nor will you probably enjoy this book because there are puns up the yin yang. So um, just keep that in mind as we continue. Yeah. Quinn Byrne is rare even among fire elementals with her powers hardwired into her arousal. She can't touch herself without setting the sheets ablaze. <laughs> With an incendiary sex drive, Quinn's dating life is drier than the desert that surrounds her hometown of Phoenix, Arizona. 
She'd give anything to have a normal romantic relationship, but she knows one thing for sure. Human men are out of the question. No exceptions. Not even if the guy is trying to woo her with delicious ice cream. August Nord is new to town, building a business that involves things staying cold. His whole life has been one long icy stretch until a fiery redhead saunters into his ice cream shop. Quinn is the hottest accountant he's ever met. I don't know why, but that was the sentence that when I read the synopsis set me off laughing hysterically was the fact that she is the hottest accountant he's ever met. Right. That's a low bar. That's I, a low bar. <laughs> just, I was like, wait a second. I missed something. What? Why does her being an accountant matter? But like, okay, it's right. fine. <laughs> and and is it like why is that in the synopsis? It was like one scene <laughs> in the whole thing. So what? Really? Oh, yeah. Quinn is the hottest accountant he's ever met, and a small business owner would be dense not to hire a professional to review their finances. Right? Again, not a major plot point. As the two approach their attraction with wary steps, the sparks flying. The sparks flying. Between them are all too real. And here we go. That last sentence in every synopsis is always going to be super punny. So I'm expecting no less. Will the flames feed their burning desire or melt their chance of a happily ever after? Yep. Expectations met. That's exactly what I was what I was waiting for. Yep. Right. And why has it got to be happy ever after? Anyway, that's probably a side (laughs) nuance. More of a critique of the genre, but you know. Anyway, that is, yes. and you know what? That's kind of like, uh, say what you want about romance. Like anybody, you know, has, everybody has their own opinions about like different facets of romance. Right. It seems to be the one sort of universal thing that readers have agreed upon is that it needs to end in a happily ever after, or at least okay. a happy for now. And I think the only okay. way people really differentiate between the two is just like happy for now is like, okay, great. It ended on a happy note. They're together. I don't need to have all the details about them spending the rest of their lives together, which I I'm sort of more in that camp. I kind of prefer me too. a happy for now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Yeah, same. Okay. Well, let's kick it off. So overall thoughts, what do we think? Mm. (laughs) So, yeah, so a couple, you know, having that sit, because I finished it earlier in the week. Um, so having having it sit for a couple of days, I, you know, I think overall charming would be the word that I would say. Yeah. Um, charming story. Certainly great sex scenes. A lot um, of them, too. A lot of them. Four or five. And, you know, so charming. There's some parts that, and we'll talk about this in mm-hmm. a little bit, that I'm like, ah, really? Um <laughs> Uh, but by and large, I thought, you know, Connolly did a, did a good job of telling a story. And, you know, it's clear she's making a universe, if you will. And yes. like, so I would, would join that, that uh, there's something there. And I think the characters are, are deep enough that there's potential for future stuff. I mean, so, um, you know, in, in some ways, I, I felt like the characters were caricatures, yeah. not as dimensional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but then. Like as the story went on, there was some more depth there. So, uh, so I could easily s- see that, and and it would be. I was intrigued enough to be like, oh yeah, I might read another one. Yeah, um, I'm, depending on where she goes. I'm with you, and I think charming is the perfect word to describe it. Um, I would say charming, a little cheesy. I do think there's a good amount yes. of cheese in this, yeah. and I I would like to think that most of it's actually intentional. So, I mean, as far as that goes, right. I'm like, that's fine. Like, you know, if that's not your cup of tea. Yeah. There, that's okay. Um, but clearly, when it's like right. intentional and the author's making that choice, I'm like, okay, well, then this is telling me, you know, this is your voice. This is, you know, how you want right. to yes. present the story and everything. Great. I think the world is probably what I like most about the book in that I haven't yeah. really, I don't read a lot of fantasy. I don't read a lot of paranormal. It is October though. Oh, excuse me. It's Cocktober though. So I, I always want to, get in as much like monster paranormal fantasy as I can in this month um, to, you know, of course, uh, share that and represent that for my right. f- listeners who like those stories. Um, and I hadn't read one like this before where it's it's all uh, about people who have this elemental, I guess, magic. I don't I don't know even if I would call it 
magic or not, but that they're all descendants from these gods and goddesses who right. represent yeah. the different elements. We've got fire, earth, water, wind, ice. I think that's all of them. Maybe I'm forgetting one, but... um yeah, I thought it was really interesting. And you would meet yeah. different characters who they, of course, these are like the descendants of the descendants. So these are like the kids and right. they all have nicknames for each other. You know, like, oh, they're the pyros. They're the pedal pushers. Like, I, I thought those were all so cute. And they yeah. have this great community where it's like they can kind of make fun of each other. But also they're all still part of this community of elementals. Right. So the larger, yeah. yeah. So it's like, even within people within your own community, you will kind of like poke fun at and, um, right. have relationships with, but like you all still right. have this overarching relationship together. Like that you all are part of this one community that nobody else knows about. It's very much like a secret, you know, community within exactly. regular yeah. Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, which I, I have to say, right. I've been doing my 50 Romances, 50 States reading challenge all right. year, and I just released the list for Arizona, and it was right before I read this book. Otherwise, oh, I would have right. included yeah. this on this the Arizona list. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I think that was a nice, There, uh, there's a richness to uh, like in the community part. Um, that mm -hmm. there was other people, and it, it alluded to the the complexities of being in you know being neighbors, friends, um, and and growing up together. That yeah, you're kind of we're in and out of relationships, and um, just as we grow and develop, and um, and have different personalities, and have those. And so I th that was a nice, nice part. Um, I had there it it, it did. There were times though that I was like, okay, is this Twilight where <laughs> it's this secret, you know, or is this like Harry Potter where there's four houses and so you're either one of these four houses. Mm. And so it was, so, the, but, but I wasn't, it wasn't problematic, but there no. were elements of like, yeah, I could see like, oh, you're trying to do this or, okay. Well, and you know, what's interesting is I feel like, you know, in, in the examples you used and in a lot of fantasy, like for instance, right now I'm binge watching, uh, that new, uh, vampire Academy show that's on oh, right. Peacock, I think. And, um, there, I feel like there's always usually kind of like a hierarchy or a structure as well within different societies. And I kind of like that there isn't one in this one, but it's also like a little different to me. Like there was never... It's weird to say this, like to be like, oh, everybody got along really well. Like there was no right, right, like fire people treating water people as like lesser than or anything. And I'm like, that's Good. yes, that's different. That's refreshing. Like I, I kind of like yeah. that they all just sort of have these powers, and like when they don't like somebody, it's not even because of what element they are. It's just because they're like, oh, Sammy is kind of a fuck boy. So like, um. Right. That's why I'm not like into yeah. him, and like that's it. <laughs> right, tell totally. That's a that's a really great point. Um, that there wasn't this, um, you know, uh, either kind of forced conflict mm -hmm. or, or even what I would say, kind of replicating what we have around in the real world yeah. around us, where you know we're we're set up to 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 not like each other because of who we are. And I think we see um, that a lot who we are, yeah. in fantasy is yeah, like, let's yeah. talk about those things in our everyday society, but placing it in a fantastical society, we can like talk about it in like a more safe way. But um, right. this one didn't do that. It just was everybody had their elements right. and that was that. Which was like kind of not, like you said, it was nice. There was not, um, there was not this, that stress tension. Yeah. So, Yeah. Good, good, really good point. So <laughs> I, I, I have to say, I don't know if I would have thought of it if I hadn't been watching Vampire Academy. And then before that, I did a rewatch of the right. Divergent movies, which is like very much <gasps> based in like different factions and like who has yes. more power. And oh, totally. So yeah, yeah that was, I yeah, think. Yeah, I'm going to, that's funny. 
<laughs> I'm gonna binge watch the Divergent movies too because that's it. Like I saw that they came out on HBO, and I'm like, oh my that's, god, I get to rewatch. That's them. what made so, me do it. They all popped yeah. up on my HBO. I was like, oh, I guess I'll put these on in the background while I clean. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do it gotta do it yeah so um which is like a side thing i just i because i remember i was reading that to jackson i think oh uh, i was reading that series to him so it's a good one yeah it's a good one i yeah, enjoyed so it was, i enjoyed it like i mean i did enjoy that yeah. one probably more than some of the other yeah. similar ones that we hear talk yeah, about a lot same. yeah no that was one of the things i did like um in fact it's it felt more like the reasons, like, especially when we're talking about our main characters, who, first of all, just the names alone, we like the allusion right. to like what they are with like Quinn Byrne, like her last name is Byrne, right. she's fire, really? and then August Nord. Like, I mean, I took Nord French, Nord is North, like, it's we associate it right. with the North Pole, like, with, you know, <laughs> so yeah. and he's from Alaska totally. because, of course, he's. Ice. He yeah, would be right. from Alaska. Right. <laughs> right. Totally. Yeah. That was uh, that uh, again contrived, but again, it's fine. Yeah. And, and and or like a little bit muddled because Harley and uh, so the sister, older sister is Harley. The middle sister, the main character is Quinn. Quinn. And so there's there's all these DC references like Poison Ivy and and then Cat and Cat's Batman their other and, their other sister and Catwoman. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like so cute and like how does that all fit in that was like kind where, of where are we going with the my dc thing overall vibe with this book was there were so many fun details and like tidbits but they were almost like it's something i've talked about before and it's honestly something i thought about a lot while i was writing my book is it feels like you almost kind of just take all these great ideas that you have and you're like I have to make these work in this book. Like I have to, because I want to use them. Like I want somebody to say this super funny line or I want, oh my gosh, their names are Harley Quinn and Kat because their parents met at like a a convention. And it's like, Comic-Con. Sure. Like, you know, but, but it's like, does it have any bearing on the story whatsoever? No. Like, and there were, um, I highlighted two specific moments that happened in the book that I was like, look, I love these two moments. One of them, I think, does work. The other one just felt so out of place for the story. Um, Mm -hmm. The first one was when uh, August is talking to his cousins because, uh, or his cousin, yeah, his cousin and his friend. Cousins, yeah. And because you have to have like your little, you know, your groups for each character. So she's got her sisters, he's got his cousins and his friends. And um, they're talking about like, stalking and he's like they're like don't stalk oh, yeah. her like that's creepy and he says is it stalking if she likes you he punctuates his point by popping off the lid of his bottle damien and i meet across uh meet eyes across the room then answer in unison yes um and then they talk about well then all those romance movies are full of stalkers sleepless in seattle there's something about mary this means war love actually and i'm like look i 100 percent agree like i completely get this and I think it's okay in the context of the book because you know they're talking about like how he really wants to pursue her but I'm like (laughs) it just it just felt so random um the one that really didn't work for me and I'm upset about it because I think it's a great conversation to have but near the end of the book when she is leaving Alaska and she's coming back to Phoenix and she's on the airplane. She sits next to this like douchey guy who is just like, oh, yeah, you should smile, baby. And she's like, oh, he's negging me like I don't like this. Right. And she basically tells him off and is like, oh, he calls her a bitch, of course, because that's always like the response when you you know shut somebody down. And she's like, there it is. There's your true colors, that toxic sludge bubbling just beneath the surface. You're such a nice guy, aren't you? So nice until a pretty girl doesn't want to hear your empty compliments. Then you shed your nice guy skin like the molting snake you are and your fangs descend, dripping poison, looking for my fleshy underbelly to tear into. And I'm just like, what? Like, I don't... Again, love the speech. It's great. Right. But why is this happening with a character we're never going to see again? This is the first and only time 
we're ever seeing this person. They don't even have a name. It's just like guy on airplane. And I just was like, this seems like such a waste. Like save something like this for a book where you can actually use it. Yes. I totally, totally agree. Um, that there, there were nice moments with potential for, for showcasing, you know, one, I think author's voice, like who, who is Lauren Collin on a lay and, and, and how, how is she trying to create a more female oriented sex positive relationship novel? So, uh, you know, love that, but you're right. They felt like they were out of contact. They were out of, they Mm -hmm. didn't, they didn't come from anywhere and they felt like they were just put in. And while I agree with them as individual scenes in the moment, they just didn't fit into the larger, larger scope of the story. That's and it. That's it. Exactly. So, so they're random. Um, they're random elements mm-hmm. to, you know, no other part of the story was about the misogyny and sexism that we know exists. Right. That was showcased in, in, in both of those for different reasons. So why, why? It would make sense if it's like she had been putting on a smile at work and dealing with like misogynists like surrounding her. And maybe this was like her telling off a coworker or a boss or something like if if it had had context context or bearing on like the story as a whole, I would have totally been rooting for her. But in this case, I'm just like, I don't. I don't get it. Um, and and then there were ones where it was almost like, you know, I, I took some comedy writing classes and there were times where it's like I felt like we were beating the horse with the dead stick yes. as far as like the joke went. Like it might have right. been like super funny the first time and then like the second time you're like, OK, like, haha, I get it. But then it just kept going. And the the right. two that I can think of right away, and it's going to sound funny because, like, I love talking in innuendos. I love pointing out, like, yes. Yes. hilarious, sexy things. But there was just so much <laughs> random sex jokes or, like, yeah. I don't know. And, and what was interesting, and I like this, but what was interesting was that they always came from the women. They always came from mostly either... Harley, the older sister, or Quinn, yes. our main character. Yeah. And Quinn basically would tell uh, August because he would be surprised. He'd be like, uh, what? And she's like, <laughs> oh, you know, my sister is like really open and like just says all these like random sexual things like all the time. So right. it's rubbed off on me. And I, on the one hand, I love that it's the women making all these jokes because I'm yes. like, this yeah. is how me and my friends joke all the time. Right. But... At the same time, I'm just like, it was like all the time. Like, it right. was like any time she made any sort of like joke, it was always like an inappropriate, right. you know, innuendo remark kind of thing, which I'm just like, again, I love it. But every single time, like, right. no, totally. Mm, yeah. Well, and it, yeah. like, uh, say, totally agree. Cause it was, again, I like the, the, uh, that we were normalizing women talking like this. Yeah. Um, but to your point, like, and as much as, as much as I appreciate sex being a constant and sexuality and sex and attraction, um, mm-hmm. being a, a, more of a constant part of our lives and our conversations, it is not every moment in my life that I'm either thinking or talking about sex. Right. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, we're talking earlier. I went to the <laughs> farmer's market this morning. I was not thinking about what sexual innuendo I can do with a, you know, with the produce at the farmer's market. Right. And so, um, so like, and that gets back to my point, like the, the, the missing the depth part, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. Harley, the older sister didn't get enough depth because all she ever talked about was getting, you know, hot and horny. Um, yeah. Or, or kind of rubbing her sister about her sex life or lack thereof it. Yeah, in um, fact, I thought she actually maybe got a little less, de- like less developed as the story went on. Like, yeah, totally agree. Because yeah. there's a moment where, and I'll talk about this because it drove me nuts, where they have sort of like their third act kind of dark night of the soul moment where right, yes. they don't <laughs> they don't even break up, which I do appreciate. Like I, I like that it's not just them yeah. like calling it quits, um, but they sort of leave yeah. off on kind of like a I don't know what happens next moment um, that I right. appreciate in theory. I think it could have gone better. But Harley is the one who's like, you know, egging on Quinn to be like, oh, well. 
um, you know, what's going to happen? He's just going to stay and take care of his family. Like, how is he going to run his business? Like how, you know, that means he's not coming back. Like, um, because he's just going to stay there and like, you're stupid to like wait for him and all that. And I'm just like, what? Where is this coming right. from? Like, I'm just like thinking, who hurt you? Like, I need to know, like, what yes. right. is going on? Like, because this can't just be coming from a place of nothing. Right, right, right. So I, I noted that same thing of, and again, like in my own mind, we want people to, like, I would, I want him to care about his family enough mm-hmm. to attend to them, not at the expense of a relationship or what he's trying to do. But, but I think like, that's, it's funny, I'm going to say this, that's human. Even though these, right. these they aren't, aren't technically humans, but you know, like I, you know, you think about your family, and and I think about my family, and all the levels of of that, and and that is a factor in my mind, and in, in some of the decisions I make, and so, mm-hmm. um, so I was surprised by that, that simplistic, overly simplistic, or or superficial, or I, I, I read it as um, like teen love kind of thing versus a uh, more yes. developed adult mature love. Um, yeah. that, you know, certainly as a, as a, as a 14 year old, I would be like, he ain't coming back and he doesn't deserve <laughs> you. And now I'm like, it, I have a, there's a different lens to that. And so mm-hmm. I also didn't know that also made me have some questions. Again, this is a, a an author point or wondering like, is this a, like a teen young adult romance or is this more of an adult adult romance? And I don't know yeah. that she was always consistent her, you know, her voice and her characters about that. Cause I agree. Yeah. Like they're supposed to be, I know that they mention that I think Harley is 20. Quinn is like yeah. a little bit younger. So I'm like, okay, so you're talking about a cast of characters who are in their late twenties, early thirties. And yeah. I think I would have believed this if you had told me they were in college. Like I, yes. I, yes. I think they could have been like 21, 22, like just out of college. Um, yeah. There's also, I kept trying to remind myself, I was like, okay, but I also need to take into consideration that, and this is something I don't usually like in romance, is when the main characters have like the same conflict, because both Quinn and August, I wanted to call him Nord, both Quinn and August, they've never been in a relationship. So like, they're both kind of navigating a first relationship together, and- for her, it's mostly like an internal conflict of like her not knowing how to control her fire. And so it's like she doesn't want that to hurt people. That's why she hasn't tried to have relationships. And then she finds the one guy apparently on the entire planet yes. who not only is ice to her fire, but they both also experience these elementals when they're aroused. <laughs> like, right. they're just right. like, yeah. what are the chances? Um, and... He, his internal conflict isn't a lot. Like, his is mostly, right. like, what if she leaves me? Like, what if I'm too cold for her? What if I'm not right. yeah. what she needs? And so it was It was a lot of, like, things I think we associate with, like, early relationships. Yes. It's like, what if I'm not good enough for them? What if yes. they don't like this thing about me that I think the older you get, you think a lot less about right, right. <laughs> so totally well know. and yeah and that was again we'll, we'll talk sex i know we're going to talk sex at the end but like the sex Hell was hot. yeah <laughs> the sex was hot and then 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 we, you get these layers of of really this strange anxiety yeah that i'm like why 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 like i you know i again as you named about like I, I did think it was t- like, I'm too convenient uh, that it was like, they have the same sort of, I was like, really the it's two people fate. in the world. It's fate, Craig. I know. Well, and that, and that gets at, the, that rubs me also that it's like, this is the one person in the world that I was meant to be yeah. with that brings balance mm. to me. And I'm like, Oh God, here we are again. Like, no. Well, and that makes me wonder too, because I'm like, her sisters are both fire elements. And like, obviously, they explain that they experience it at different times. Like, I think for one of them, it's anger. And for one of them, it's fear. Yes. And I'm like, okay, so, but like, we've kind of set into motion this idea that one of them is going to be with this guy who I think was a water sign, a squid, yeah, squid. as they call yeah, him. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, so she doesn't have to be with somebody I see um, totally. in order to like 
be okay? Like, it, is it a control thing for Quinn or is it, right. it, is it when it happens to her? Like, for everybody else who has fire that experiences fire during arousal, do they also have to find an icy person? Right. Like, so I, I don't know. I just, and I'm sure this is me, like, reading way too much into it. But you also brought up, I wanted to ask you about this, <laughs> between the anxiety and the sex did you ever get a feeling sometimes where it's like they were trying, she she especially was trying to kind of avoid conflict by like initiating sex with him? Because I got that feeling a few times. <laughs> That's interesting. That's so funny. Um, I didn't pick that up. Like, but I did, as you say that, I read it all as, as, a, as, a, as a person really uncomfortable with their, their own power. Mm. Uh, which I th- actually I think is a neat idea anyway, and so it's this it's this this give and go, like I I want to be all in it like the the first the first time where she comes into the ice cream shop dre- you know <laughs> dressed hot all in and is like I'm gonna let this go I'm not gonna try to control it I'm just gonna be who I am and see where this goes, um and it was actually a really I thought it was a really nice scene mm-hmm. of her just embracing who she is. But then, uh, but then other, uh, other times to your point of like where the anxiety comes in, I think she was less comfortable with that and more trying to kind of dim herself down. I I don't know if that's the right word. Dim, dim the flame. And then try and (laughs) dim the flame, right? That's why, as I said it, I'm like, oh God, here I am saying the thing that we were criticizing in the beginning. Oh, I'm going to get back to it in a second. So keep going. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Right. (laughs) trying to engage from a different relationship with her with their own powers. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's that's maybe what I what I would agree that I see is that I don't I don't want to have conflicts in this. So I'm going to try to I'm just going to try to I'm going to try to be this kind of person. Yeah. Even though I'm not. Yeah, I can see that. Um and like look, we will talk about the sex in a second because the sex scenes I, I thought were really right. fun. There were a good variety of them. Yes. Yes. You know, a high old time. Um I will say the two other things I wanted to talk about, we've also kind of briefly touched on the amount of puns and like word usage related to fire and ice. I mean, right. It, it definitely had me rolling my eyes. Like, I was like, look, it's cute. It's punchy. I get it. But let me just, I wanted to highlight, like, a few because, oh, the other thing was that they would mention ice cream a lot. Like, there was a lot of yes. ice cream and waffle cones. Like, she gets turned on by the smell of waffle cones. Waffle and cone, right. I'm like, right. look, okay. I can't fault you for that. Like, I totally understand that one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Let's see. There were a couple that I did highlight. What were they? See, this isn't even about fire or ice, but it it is about like elements. And so during one of the scenes, she's like bent over and he's like looking at her naked from behind. And he's like, but then her hand appears sneaking through her split legs and fingering that opening as if she's petting the petals of the most beautiful flower in the world. And I just was like, huh? And um, right, right. There was one near the end where, uh, oh, she says, "If I were to cut myself, I'd bleed pure lava." Um, and then I think there's something in one of the sex scenes that I chose where it's, um, they, t- oh, they talk about like, oh, so like, if you get really cold when you get aroused, does that mean like you shoot frozen cum? <laughs> And then right. later during the sex scene, he's oh. like, I could feel the ice mingling with my semen. I'm just like, what? No, seriously, right. Yeah. This is Again, the problem I, with I, like I, fantasy and world building is like, you have to be able to answer these questions. Right. <laughs> right. And like, and that may work. May, maybe that is, you know, appealing to some people. Yeah. <laughs> But I, but I'm with you. I'm like, oh God, you're flat. Like, they're just it's the cliches. Like, so th- this is the part. Like when it, when it dipped into the cliches, mm-hmm. I was like, stop. Like, no, that's mm-hmm. not. You know, darn it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and then along with the cliches, the other thing I wanted to mention was the um that third act dark night breakup moment where it's like again yes. they don't they don't break up so i did appreciate that because i kept thinking right 
by her inner dialogue, I kept thinking it was leading up to a moment where it's like she was going to break up with him or like freak out at him because God forbid he stays in Alaska to help out his family because his mom has like two broken arms. I just I was so put off by everybody's attitude, her sister's her um they were so like upset and outraged by the idea that he would fly home to Alaska to help out his parents uh with their bakery but also help them out at home because his mom like fell off a ladder and like broke some bones I just was like right what else was he supposed to do I don't understand why people are upset about this choice (laughs) totally right and I loved how she ended up going to Alaska with me him. too. Me that too. was a nice thing to say, because I thought that countered some of the our, the stereotypes and the and the conventions and the, and the cliches of. But it, it, and she went to say, "I'm here to help you." Um, yeah. Even though, like sidebar, I was like, "This is what a girlfriend does," and I was like, "Stop that!" Right. But there was a lot of that, a lot of that convention stuff that I was mm-hmm. like, "We need to move away from." Um, but I, I do like that she was like, I'm here to help you. This is not about me. I'm here to, this is an important thing. I'm here to help. Yeah. Um, and she got to meet the family and be a part of it. And I love that. But you're right. When it was time for her to go home, then it sparked back up with all of this anxiety again. And this uh, like, oh, we're breaking up because I need to go home and he's staying for a little longer, which w- didn't it end up being like two weeks total. Yeah, like, it wasn't really, it, it wasn't that long because when she gets back to Phoenix, you know, his, uh, p- the people that work for him are like, oh my God, we're almost out of ice cream. And first of all, I'm like, that right. seems really weird that you own this business and you haven't trained your staff to know how to make ice cream. First of all, I'm just going to put that out there. Okay. But also that, Amen. you know, everybody is really critical of him for this idea that he would like shut the business for like a week or two, you know, however long it needs to happen. And I know it's like a new business. And this is like the only reason it's mentioned that Quinn's an accountant in the book because we never see her being an accountant except when she's being an accountant for him. And it's, it's always her scolding him about like, you can't give me free ice cream because you're a new business owner. And he's like, girl, I think you're hot. Like, let me give you an ice cream cone. And it's just like, (laughs) I don't, do you think his business is going to go under because he gives his girlfriend ice cream? Like that, that's outrageous. Like it just, Totally. There was like always these kind of like through lines that like didn't go all the way through where I was like, okay, right. what is the conflict in this book? Is it about them getting together and like figuring out their balance of these powers they have? Right. Is it about his business and like we have to save the business? Is it about like, you know, I, there were just so many different pieces that I was like, I like this. I like this. I like this. Yes. Do they all fit together? sometimes yeah, yeah. but um right. yeah that yeah, I thought agreed. was interesting um I did have there was uh one petty note that I had um okay I have ah. two I have two petty notes one I'm like okay it's fine food people like who you know make food like do weird things so like he talked about making buttered popcorn ice cream and I was just like Oh, absolutely yeah. not absolutely not like i no, love popcorn no i love ice cream but not no no but at the same time i'm yeah. like okay i watch a lot of top chef i see people do weird shit all the time with food so totally yep right. okay, okay i'll let that one go yeah. this one i will not let this go because i have talked <laughs> about this before look when it comes to any kind of shower or bath sex, and I think this is the perfect segue into talking about the sex. Yes, good. But okay. Yeah. When it comes to shower and back bath sex, I'm very picky because I'm just like, okay. you no, know, if you're doing it in the water, like it takes out the natural lubricant. You make a mess. Yes! You get water all over the ground. Like I just so right. and then coupled that with the fact that she says the Nords, so they're at his family's house, the Nords have one of those luxurious claw foot tubs. And I was just thinking to myself, you have described her as like this curvy woman. You have described him as this like lumberjack hulking dude. 
I have had an apartment with a clawfoot tub and they seem a lot more romantic than they are because are, right. there is no way you are fitting two bodies comfortably right. in this clawfoot right. tub. <laughs> like, and, no. And, right. Comfortably and comfortably for sex. Right. There's a and difference. The There's a difference between no, just like right. sitting yeah. back and being comfortable and like being comfortable enough to like, you know, jet around. Like yeah. it's mm -mm, right. nope. Yeah, agreed, one hundred percent. And again, like, so that was one of my notes too about like I was like, s s shower bath sex does not work like that. No. And <laughs> and again, they were both like they were both hot parts of this. You know, they were well described, really, really entertaining, really enjoyable yeah. sex scenes in the book. But it, like, I had that moment of like, that is not how it has ever worked. <laughs> And then yeah. I, there was one line or something like that. She's like, I couldn't tell if I was wet from the bath water or, you know, or because I was wet. No, nope, like, you would know. Oh, <laughs> you would know. <laughs> and you know that it's the bath water. Yep. Yeah. I'm never, never okay. Right. Never okay. Yeah. No, with totally. Water sex scenes in general, they just aren't for me. Right. And because I yeah. can't take myself out of that place of reality. And so, like, look, if you want to, like, it. bend them over the tub, if you want to, like, do it you know, something else in the shower. Right. I'm like, fine, yeah. fine. That's, that's yeah. great. But like, we also or, know they. Or, or acknowledge that, that you have to have other lubricant to yes. make it work. <laughs> yeah. It's as easy right. as that. that. Like, no, no, exactly. Yeah. But it was, oh. I, it was, it was a moment that like brought me back to reality where I'm like, oh no. Yeah. I yeah. thought the shower scene was better than the, or more more realistic, if you will, than the yeah, bathtub scene. Yeah, I agree. I actually yeah. really liked the shower scene because I liked them. It, that's so funny. I forgot that there were like shower and bath. But it's like I like yeah. that they explained like, oh, we're using the shower to kind of like temper both of our yeah. um, elements. And I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense to me. I get that. Um, with totally the bathtub, right. yeah. which, by the way, even though it's not my favorite scene, I did choose the bathtub sex scene as my sex excerpt. Oh, that's funny. Because okay. there's just so much language in it that I was like, oh, my God, this has to be heard. Like, this has to be shared. Right. <laughs> I think just... I did, too. That's funny. I was like, was did this you? a bathtub scene? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. We'll give them the uh, cheesy bathtub scene with um, him. Oh, yeah you know, letting ice mi mingle with his cum. And then people can right, choose yeah. to go read the book for the other scenes because Definitely. the shower scene is good. I also like the first time they have sex is like at the ice cream shop. And yeah, she nice. like literally burns the clothing like off her body. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. Oh, before, we go, before we go deep dive into, into mm -hmm. the sex parts, um, so this was this was one line that I uh, that I that I actually I loved. Okay. Um, so it's it's said by Nord, and it's when they're talking about <laughs> Nord. Oh, it's said by August uh, when they're talking about like should we be in a relationship in the parking lot? Um, mm -hmm. And so um, and she's anxious about it and blah 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 blah. Um, and some of that's tied to her like I'm going to hurt you with my powers if I let it go. And right. Some of that's I think the other relationship stuff, but um, this I thought was really nice. And it's, and it's on page 100, at least the paperback version. Um, the choice is easy. The relationship takes the work. And so they were talking about this, you know, he was talking about, it was like, I, I want to be together. And she's like, it's so complicated. And he's like, yeah. And he said, like, again, the choice to be together is, is easy. It's the, yes, the work is all the, all the how we be together. And I, I thought that was a really, really That's nice. Because nice. for, for me, that is also what I feel like has been missing in the, the societal training that we all get about what it is to be in a relationship. And I think that's also where the really, really great stuff is, is this, mm. like, I'm choosing to be with you. And yes, the, the being together is hard. You know, and I say that as, you know, we're coming at Nicole and I are coming up in 25 years together and mm -hmm. five years before that. So like we have 32 years together and there's a lot of life there. Yeah. Um, and it's a, and it's been a lot of work. Um, but it also reminded me of this, this most beautiful scene in Goodwill Hunting um, where Robin Williams, the therapist is talking about his, his relationship with his wife. Um, and, and she passed and, you know, he's sad and, 
but he also talks about you know he talks about they're laughing about her farting in bed and waking the dog up and and yes. he was in the, in this therapy session he says that's the good stuff mm-hmm. um and it just that line reminded me of the beauty of really what i think is is joyful about relationships and and, and, and romance and erotica really is about relationships and mm-hmm. the um the, the the I just love that that was an element of it that it was about us starting to do the hard work choosing these choosing the choice that we're drawn to each other but also committing to the hard work that comes with it so anyway yeah no that's that part. that's a good one honestly I think August had the more like romantic yeah. lines and I I that's something similar that I actually put into my book too in that I feel like women in general are very weary of like nice men these days like just because of everything we've been conditioned by and so when you (laughs) what I love to read in romance are these men who are just so nice and you know so Mm -hmm. attracted to and love these women so much that you're like oh what's wrong with him and you're like no 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 that's not how we should feel like we should we should love that this is, you know, who this person is. And, um, you know, he's a great business owner. He's a great family member. He's a good friend. Like he, he's a all around pretty great, um, dude. And so one of the parts I liked was near the end where he, um, he likes kissing her freckles like on her face. Oh yeah. And she's like, you're never going to get them all. And he said, uh, oh yeah. She says, you'll, you'll never get them all. There's too many. August runs his nose along my hairline, then nips my ear. We've got time. And I was like, oh, that's that's just such a yeah, cute thing to say. It's like, oh, I love it. But um, anyway, let's talk about the dirty, dirty sex. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Did you have a specific place you highlighted that you wanted to share? Um, it sounds like maybe we might have even done the same spot. I totally, I'm wondering. Like, so that could be an awesome, awesome thing um, if we chose the same passage. Like maybe like I don't know if that's a record again. I haven't listened to all of your sessions, but um, so he, here's my here's my section, and so it's on again paperback book the one thirty five page one thirty five. No, I did the shower. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. I did the shower scene. Okay. Okay. So probably not the same thing, but that's so that's good. Okay. You start then because yours comes first in the book. Okay. Cool. You know. So again, the 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 pose, the stereotype pose where he's lifting her up and holding her while he's while they're having sex against the wall again i'm like Mm -hmm. that that also never works the way everybody (laughs) shows it on tv and describes it so um because um i just yeah anyway physically it's just not uh we don't train for that your arms are gonna get tired real fast yes exactly (laughs) but i will say there but i did like this because i was all thinking about like arms are tired how are you stimulating a woman in all the ways that you need to be stimulated, not just penetration. Mm -hmm. And so um, rather than kind of continuing with the unrealistic part, Connolly talks about like, Oh, his frost is then stimulating. And so he doesn't. So actually I was like, Oh, that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, So anyway, they're in the shower. Um, You know, they're using the, the, the water to, what, what do they call it? Smart sex? Is that what it was? Yes, like, smart sex. Yeah. That we're going to have smart sex by doing it in the water so that we don't like burn the house down or like turn anything into like a glacier. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I, so I love digging it that, that we're setting up smart sex, responsible sex, which it could be a metaphor for a whole lot of other ways that I think it's important for us <laughs> to talk about responsible sex and smart sex. But I love it. So anyway, they're in the shower. They're tempering it up. They're having sex. He's holding her against the wall. Like, so he says, I, I'm, I'm close. His voice is gravely against my ear, his breath more refreshing than mint gum. So again, like, do, do I don't need the cheesy part here? Like, I don't, I, I don't care about his breath. It, at that it takes you out of it. It takes totally. you out of the scene. Yeah. So she is also close. And so she says, apparently in the rapture of the moment, doesn't have many words, but she says, my clit is all I can manage back. And uh, so she says, expecting August to follow my command, I grasp his shoulders tighter, preparing for the moment one of his hands moves away, supporting my weight. Um, but his grip, grip doesn't shift. The cold does. Suddenly there's a, and so this is the part that I highlighted that I was like, oh, God, this is mm-hmm. good. Again, the, 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 the description that you're talking about. 
Suddenly there's a focus on the ch- to the chill. The frost coats my thighs, then tips the of then the tips of the curls of his dick disappear into. Then the sensation dips lower between my folds. His power is so strong, he's basically manifested himself into a third icy hand. When the pressure circles my clit, my mind goes blank. When consciousness returns, every muscle in my body is clenching and tensing in time with heated waves of pleasure. August's chest pins me to the shower wall as his cock stays buried deep with, deep in me. From the now uneven jerking of his hips and panting groans, I can guess he found his release soon after I claimed mine. Yeah. So I, I, th- I, th- I thought that was a, a nice way to, to again, use, use the elements, the powers in yes. there in a way that allowed it to be more of a how we should st- be stimulating each other in the multiple dimensions. A helping hand. I mean, it, it very much hand. is like use your, use your, like, I know, I know it's not like they do evil, but it's like, use your powers for good. Like, you know, use them in a way that is mutually beneficial, like for you and your partner. Like, cause I think right. so often, especially with Quinn, we focus on like, what a hindrance her powers are. And so right. it's kind of nice to have these small moments of like, oh, but here's something cool that like we yes. can do with our powers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And again, you talk about like being attentive to our partners. I love that they were attentive to yeah. each other. Um, mm-hmm. And they both they both had orgasms. Um, and mm-hmm. that, so again, lots of really nice things within in that with that one scene so their best communication was always in the bedroom yeah or, or totally. like whatever yeah. shower bath you know wherever they were but right. like anytime exactly. things got sexy they were like really communicative and i was like oh yeah okay What's your- okay so let me give you the the tub scene the tub that would not hold two people comfortably let alone two yeah, people right having sex um but anyway so uh it's a little bit longer just because I kept like looking for a place to stop and then I would find another line that I'm like oh no we got to get that in okay okay so so this is get ready because there are going to be a lot of temperature references in this passage um and we will start with we'll start here my hands grip the sides of the tub in front of hers bracketing her naked curves Quinn releases her hold only to grasp my wrists. I cage her with my body as our legs remain submerged in the water. So first I had to do like little mental math. No, until like, I said that, I'm like, I can't imagine this. <laughs> their, their, their bottom halves are in the tub, but not their top. Okay. So I'm like picturing them on all, all fours in the yeah, tub, fine. which I don't, I don't know. Her back is hot against my front, and I press my nose into her neck, breathing in deep the scent of campfires and warm ovens. <laughs> really? Yeah. I can't, like, I don't know. It's, again, like, wh- what is it with bringing out all the smells? Like, especially during <laughs> a sex scene, let alone a sex scene in a bathtub? <laughs> No, totally. And again, campfires are not hot for me. Like, again, I, le- I mean, I enjoy the campfires, but... That's not what I'm... Then you smell uh, smoky. <laughs> yes. Right. And can we wash each other first before... Anyway, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing is I'm like, you're in the tub. Nobody should smell like like an <laughs> oven. Like, this isn't the place to smell like an oven is in the <laughs> tub. Not clean. Not clean. Take me hard, she whispers. I want to feel you even when I'm back in Phoenix. A groan wrenches from my throat as frost condenses in my gut and coats my skin. It only takes a moment to align my aching shaft with her warm pussy. The first slide into her supernatural heat, I don't know if I like that, is almost enough to have my eyes rolling back in my head. Yeah, me too. The water sloshes as I thrust. A mess. And each time I bury deep in Quinn, I'm rewarded with a happy gasp from her lips. Keeping her demand in mind, I rut into her like a beast. Fuck her like the abominable snowman. Right, right, right. I have to pause on that one. That's not even the end, but I have to pause on fuck her like the um, abominable snowman. (sighs) Okay, we've all digested that. The bathroom (laughs) fills with the sound of water dripping on the floor and our skin slapping against each other. Every part of my body that touches hers burns. If only this blaze could stay forever, the shape of Quinn imprinted on me. 
All I want is more of the delicious sensation. Frustration at the thought that I'll have to give it up tomorrow makes the pounding of my hips almost angry. Quinn groans low, and with the power surge the sound elicits, I direct my frost towards her clit, imagining what I would do if I could somehow be inside her, but also tonguing her. Yeah, so using your powers. Again, I love that. Yeah, right. My my fire elemental gasps, her nails digging gouges into my wrists, fire tears through my body, originating at the pressure points between us. Her molten essence is inside me, filling every inch of my being, seeking to return the favor. I shout as my hips buck a final time before I spill into her, letting ice mingle with my cum. There you go. Right. <laughs> so, abominable snowman. That's all I'm going to say. That's right. all Tell I'm going to yep. say about that one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But right. that being said... I, I think you're right. There was definitely a good amount of like focus on making sure everybody was enjoying themselves. Yeah, I like right. that they're talking a lot in these scenes. It it just was, again, it was kind of beating the horse with the dead stick as far right. as like the elements went right. totally. where yeah. I'm like, yeah. we know, we know by this point in the book what is going on with each of them. I don't know if we exactly. need to be constantly reminded over and right. over again. Right. Agreed. That being said, I'm kind of curious about future books in the series because right. I kind of want to see if the sisters partner with other elements. Like, I'm like, I want to see what happens when, like, somebody's with an earth element or somebody's with right. a water element. Yeah. Like, what right. does that look like? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's you're right. I mean, again, there's lots of nice potential for for future stuffs in the in the in the universe. Well, let's wrap this one up with giving this book a few grades. And Excellent. I don't know if you remember, but on Boobies and Newbies, we rate for heart, humor, and heat on a scale of one to ten. Ten being the very best that it could possibly be for you, of course. Right. Yeah. So, um, let's start with heart. What do you think? Mm, I'm gonna go seven or eight on heart. Okay. Yeah. Solid, yeah. solid choice. That's um, it. I was kind of in between like a six or seven, so I okay. think we're kind yeah. of in the same ballpark. I think so. Yeah. Again, I, I it, it was it, a nice job about ca- people caring for each other. And again, I think this is the the charming part that we were talking about earlier. That it just has that charmingness to it. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you go beyond like just the romantic relationship and there's yes. like the family, the friends, like for me, that always adds to the heart. Same. So yeah, agreed. Yeah. Okay. How about the humor? I mean, I'm interested. I, I think <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to give this one when it comes to humor. Right. It's a tough one. Yeah, it is. A, it's, it's a tough one. Um, Cause I think like we talked about, there was, there was elements of the humor that I really enjoyed mm-hmm. and there was, a whole lot of cheesy, <laughs> cheesy, overly cheesy. Cheese ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cheese ball, just silliness. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to go six because I want to give it more than a five because it was certainly humorous and it was, it was lighthearted and yeah. enjoyable, but it was like uh, the cheesiness really, I think it's almost the like overly cheesiness. You, the- you're taking points away. Like it's like if they had like yes. stopped somewhere, yeah. like it could have been an eight, but every time you kept making the exactly. same joke, yes. I took a point off. Yes. <laughs> right. It's, it's, that is exactly it. right. It, had, it could have been an eight. Yeah. I'm probably in the same area. I think I'm probably going to give it a six because you're right. It's on the funnier side of books that like we normally read for right. the podcast. Um, I feel like, Humor is the rating that generally we forego a lot of the time just because we're like, this isn't meant to be funny. This isn't meant to be a funny book. It's meant to be like a family saga angst fest. And it's like, that's fine. There's not that there's nothing wrong with that. Um, This one, I think there are times where it was funny. And I think there were times where it was like the author was trying to make it funny. And Agreed. That's not how comedy works. Like, good comedy is just going to be situational, funny things that happen. And, you know, like like her accidentally burning the clothes off her body before they have sex. I'm like, to me, that's hilarious. I'm like, I love that. I think that's such a funny side effect of like, oh, my God, you're right. If you had this power, like, what would happen? Like, if you... Yeah. (laughs) couldn't control it like your clothes would literally burn off your body but 
Right. You know, you can only get away with that so many times before it becomes a cliche. So right. I'll stick with Agreed. a six. Yeah, good. Okay. Now, how about the heat? Because, I mean, obviously, literally, it's like a 10 out of 10 because, one, they're in Phoenix, right. and two, she's, like, made of fire. <laughs> uh, but right. Right. Um, what do you think? It's definitely hotter than the last one we read. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to go I'm gonna go uh, a 9 or a 10 on the heat. Nice. Because good sex scenes. They were just and, – and I think, like, four or five, I think. Several, um, yeah. So – and 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 different kinds of and different kinds of sex. Mm-hmm. So and and again, a consensual, a loving, and caring way. So yeah, it was. Why don't we say nine? Mm-hmm. Um, because I thought it, like I, it, it was really hot. It certainly was the hottest thing I've ever experienced. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think you know this is probably that maybe the line between like romance novel versus just straight up erotica. Sure. And. <laughs> erotica is a, is a fantasy in a whole other realm mm-hmm. and, and what i liked about this it was it was it was hot and it had a community and family and people right. and humor and so yeah so it wasn't trying to be total like way out there hot but it was hot i'm with you i think i would probably put this between an eight or a nine for me um and okay. for like the scale that i've kind of developed for boobies and newbies ratings the thing that would have put it higher would have been like the introduction of toys or something like a little bit on the kinkier Good. side. Yes. Anytime yeah. you bring in Good. like additional partners or, you know, something that's kind of goes beyond yeah. uh, this couple having, I don't want to say right. vanilla sex. Cause it's not, it's, you know, I mean, it's, but, um, but there, it's but, conventional sex. Yeah. But there was a good amount of it. That's like the thing that for me yes. kept the rating high was that there were multiple yeah. scenes and um, I did yeah. like, it almost feels like a toy when it's like when they use when he uses his like frost. Yes. His yeah, frost right. power. Yeah. Um <laughs> I know. I do like that. So yeah, I, I think I'll give it like an eight and a half. Yeah, that's good. Solid. And and I would agree with you. Like yeah, the the the, the other dimensions of uh, what sex and sexuality mm-hmm. could be. Uh, right? toys and other people or fantasy role play. Yeah. Like yeah, there's lots of things that they, there is um, not enough. They could have done the whole playing. Superman, Harley Quinn. Oh my gosh. There is not enough role play in romance, by the way. I have to say, like, of all the kinks and sexy things that are incorporated into romance novels, I hardly ever read one where there's, like, a role playing element. Like, I've seen it a ton in erotica, but not as much in romance, which I'm kind of like, what's going on? Why can't these couples, like, play sexy scientist for the night? Like, who cares? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. N- note to other authors out yes. there. Yes. <laughs> at least you and I want to see more role play. So, okay. There you go. There you go. Our next pick. We'll, we'll, we'll I'll try to find it for our yes. next, okay, our next that's time. Good. Right. All right. <laughs> I'm all in on that. Good. Well, this has been a fun one. I think we're definitely on the upward trajectory with our, with our book picks for this one. This so, good. yep. Yep. And for uh, anybody listening that, you know, this I know we're just at the beginning of October at this point by the time this episode comes out, but you know, this is kind of what I've got planned for the rest of the month are like I'm not going to say spooky reads, but more paranormal fantasy reads and if that's something you're interested in, hooray, I'm so excited and please let me know if you have any recommendations that you'd like me to check out as far as paranormal fantasy romance go because I I I know I don't read enough of it but we've got monster this month we've got magic this month we've got fire and water elements you know and ice cream obviously right. so Lots um ice cream. Yeah, yeah I'm excited for it, uh Cocktober Cocktober right and and I think what you're also saying is there's more to come yes <laughs> In more ways than one. In more ways than one. Exactly. So, like, I mean, I that was the that was the slow pitch over the plate. Yeah, I had to take it. So, yeah, more to come from Kelly Reynolds and Boobies and Newbies. You got it. October. You got it. <laughs> so much for listening. Boobies and Newbies is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. 
Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow Boobies and Newbies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Boobies Podcast. Hey, Boobies and Newbies fans, I've got some exciting news for the month of October. First things first, the wonderful ladies from My Worst Date podcast have invited me to open their live show at the end of the month. That's right, I'm heading back to LA for a one night only event, Friday, October 28th. And I've invited my girl Becky from Too Stupid to Live to join me. We will be discussing the best and worst of romance archetypes, playing a game or two, and sharing romance book recs based off of our favorite bad dating stories from My Worst Date. Tickets are available now, and the best news? There are both in-person and stream-from-home options available. That's right, friends near and wide can watch and listen. So grab your tickets now using the link in any of my social media bios or by visiting boobiesandnewbies.com. And as if that wasn't exciting enough, October is also the release month for my debut holiday novella, Meet Me in Los Feliz. Now, if you like bisexual heroes who paint their nails, plus size heroines with purple hair, sexy shenanigans involving toys and pajama onesies, and Christmas in a big city where for once it does not snow, then I highly recommend pre-ordering a copy. Meet Me in Los Feliz is available October 25th in both paperback and ebook. And if you do attend the live show in person, I'll be selling and signing copies. I'll also be offering signed copies and swag packs for a limited time only, so look out for that announcement soon. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast, and I hope that that support will continue as I start to write and publish my own romance novels.